Hello everyone! Thank you for joining me today as we are going to have some music fun. Um, the materials we are going to be needing today is a pencil, a piece of paper, preferably um, watercolor paper, but if you don't, regular paper is going to work just fine. Um, we will also be using watercolors. And so you'll need a cup of water and a paintbrush. Where did I set my paintbrush down at? There it is got my cute little paintbrush and we are going to go ahead and get started all right so we're going to start by doing an outline of a saxophone so the first part is going to be a nice swooshing line that goes like this and we're going to draw the bell of the saxophone right here and our swooshy line is going to connect like that so this is the outside of our saxophone. We're going to draw another line going down right here. So we have a smaller little swoosh. And then we're going to have three circles. So this isn't going to look like an actual saxophone, but a stylized saxophone. You should still be able to recognize it, but it will not be like an actual saxophone. We're going to draw another line right here that's going to connect down to where our buttons are. And we're going to draw another line right here that is also going to connect. We're going to have some lines going across right here. Some lines from our keys. We're going to refine our swooshy line just a little bit. does not have to be perfect, we just want it outlined. We're going to have another, another line right here. And then we'll have a square and a smaller triangle shape right here. We're just going to add a couple of lines to help emphasize the curve and the roundness of the shape. And that is all we're going to do for the moment with our pencil. We are going to switch over to our watercolors. So we are going to use warm colors on the saxophone. So that's going to be your red, orange, or yellow. I'm going to go with my yellow. See, we got a little bit of blue in there on accent, but that's okay because that's on the outside. And the outside of our piece is going to have some nice cold colors to it. So I am just filling this with a yellow for the moment. Now you'll notice that my yellow looks a little murky, but that's okay. You will notice that it is going on nice and clean. Um, So we are swooshing these colors around. If it's uh, not spreading very easily for you, you can always add a little more water and thin it out. If you have um, regular paper and not watercolor paper, do be careful because if you put too much water in one area, the, um, the paper is going to rip on you. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some orange. I do want this to be very light. I'm going to load up my paintbrush with orange, but I'm going to dip it in the water. I'm going to come over to the side over here, and I'm going to brush some of it off because I really don't want it to be a very dark orange. I just want to create some shadow effects so that it looks 
a little more realistic inside our picture. These bands, we're going to add in some orange on them. Same thing with the mouthpiece up here. So we have some orange. We're even going to add in some nice red. And same thing, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to dip it in my water. I'm going to load up my brush with the red. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to break it off on the side so it's not as strong. I'm going to do the same thing. It's going to help strengthen those shadow areas. And if I feel like it is too strong, I can always add more water and thin it out. Once again, that's really strong, so I'm just going to get some more water and spread that color down. Alright, we're going to add some more orange and red. I'm actually going to combine them a little bit because I do want this piece right here where the mouthpiece is to be considerably darker than the rest of the piece. And that is because the, the mouth piece of the saxophone is normally black. It's not going to be that bright metal color. Alright, but if we do feel like it is too dark and too saturated, and I don't want to go outside of that area, what I can do is I can take a paper towel and I can dab it very gently. If it ever feels like there's too much water on the page, just grab the paper towel and dab away. And we're gonna get some more yellow to come back in here. Darken up some of these areas that have gotten washed out. We do have some of that orange in there. Do some orange with the yellow. We are going to move on to some colder colors. So your cold colors are going to be your blue, green, and your purple. And these colors are going to swirl around the outside of our page because I already have some blue at the bottom. Uh, I'm going to start there. We can have these colors be dark or we can have them be light. So I think as I get closer to the saxophone, I want it to kind of fade into these lighter pastel-like colors. So what that means is I'm going to start with a thick color down here. And then I'm going to add water to spread the color closer. Now, we might get some hints of green here as we're getting closer to the saxophone, and that's okay. We're going to be careful not to get it overly saturated so we can control how much of that is looking green. The other thing we can do is we can use actual green close to it. So let's add in some green over here. And 
and adding a little bit of water will help blend and mix. Now, if you don't have watercolors at home, it is okay. I do want you to color your saxophone. Um, you can use crayons, color pencils, or markers. Take your time. Think about where you want your colors to blend and spread. Um, you can get some really cool effects layering color pencil or crayon. Um, so you can do a little bit of blue and layer in some green or some purple. Um, you can layer up the yellows, the reds, and the oranges. Um, just use what materials you have available. some blue green in here so we still have those colors mixing and blending So even though my favorite color is purple, I am not going to use purple in this piece. Um, I was originally going to do some purple up here, but I really like how this blue-green is working out. So I think that's what I want to focus on. You don't always have to use all the colors. Even if purple is the best color in the world, you don't have to use it. I can't believe I'm saying that and I'm recording it. That's crazy. Some more green going over here. Nice and dark green. Maybe lighten up the green that's right here. Make it nice and light at the top. So I have this section in here still left to do. Teachers, at this time, please dismiss all remaining students to the cafeteria. All remaining students, please go to the cafeteria. Please ignore the announcement that was just made. You did not have to go to the cafeteria, as you are not here at school. Right, I am being careful in here because I don't want to lose that U-shape. And I don't want to lose the key shape. I need to go back in here with my yellow and fix that and I will do that in just a moment. Can 
a lot, this little area that's extra watery. So now I can go in, put some little bit of dark color in there. Look how bright that saxophone pops off the page. This is looking wonderful, guys. I can't wait to see what you've come up with. Now one of the last things that we are going to do is we are going to trace our work. Tracing it, outlining. Being careful to stay inside our lines. It's okay if we wobble just a little bit, just do your best. Slow and steady. Everyone say hi, Miss Wiltrell. We're almost done. And then this outside right here. And last but not least, we have the mouth of the saxophone. And of course, we want to put our signature in the bottom right hand corner. I can't wait to see your beautiful artwork. Um, I'm gonna add in a little detail here and Voila. I can't wait to see your brilliant work. All right, guys. Bye.